Black Lives Matter is just a concept. Until we, the black people, until the day we see that our lives matter, that we begin to look in ourselves and begin to show that from our community, from, from down level going up, the rest of the world would not see our life. They will not see the value. We have been programmed for self-destruction. We don't love each other. Look at our women. They are bleaching themselves so they could be lighter skin. Look at some are having fake hair. Look at young people. Today I had a phone call with another girl who's telling me about how our brother was saying I hate to be black person and I hate black people and I don't want to be black. That's how mental illness it is drilled into our head. Let's take it back home, back in Africa. Instead of talking about the people in the West, police brutality, if you want to see where it is, go back to the motherland. I would probably say 95% or 98% of the people who are from the bottom of the pyramid in Africa has been brutalized by police. If not beaten, put in cell or done something wrong. So look at it this way. White person come to Africa, they do something really wrong. The police will not touch them. The government will not touch them. They say, he's an investor. An Indian come, they do something wrong. He's an investor. Chinese do something wrong. He's an investor. Japanese come, do something wrong. He's an investor. An Arab come, do something wrong. He's an investor. A black person do something wrong. You get bitten. Myself, I have been brutalized by police. That's why I'm living in the West. I've been in different countries in Africa and I, I've seen what police do to their own people and how I've experienced it myself. Until we, the black people, see the value in us, until we see our life matter, the rest of the world is not going to see our life matter. They will not see the value. This is how we can add value wherever we are. Those in the West, this is how we can really go and add value in our life. Those who have succeeded, if we can invest back at home, where are lawyers, where are engineers, where are scientists, where are doctors, where are our entrepreneurs, those with the money, if they can invest back in the neighborhood where there is brutality, if we can grow our businesses, if we can have that economy then people will see our value. The value is in the dollar. Where you make money, that's where you don't get bullied. As long as we are the bottom of the planet, wherever we are, we have no value. The bottom line is, if you're poor, you have no value. If you're poor, you have no value. And so where is poverty? Poverty begins here, in the mind. How do we begin to reprogram ourselves? How do we begin to love ourselves? Because we, we don't show any love for ourselves. Look at how we kill each other back home. Africa is wealthy, but we are there because we've been programmed to self-destruct and we continue to self-destruct. Now, if you hear this, if you want the real change to happen, change begins from home. Let's begin with us. And as we get out there, people see the value in us. Look at the violence in the neighborhood. There's more black crimes against black crimes in anywhere. We are the one killing ourselves. Now, all of this thing, we go on writing. One of us is starts to scream, go, 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 go. We go on, on the right, on the street. That is called reacting. We're just reacting. After a while, it'll cool down. Not, nothing really changed. When you react, it doesn't change anything. It just makes it worse. What we need to do is look at the root cause of things and do the reality. Work hard, increase our mental power and add value in our lives. How did the Jewish people do it? How did the Chinese do it when they came here and they found African-Americans or those who have been here, been here for 400 years? The Chinese were colonized before. How did they be able to come up how did they able to reprogram themselves? What the first thing the Chinese did when they got their independence is set up reprogramming centers where Chinese had to be reprogrammed to know who they are, where else they're from, what value they can, and who is their enemy. And how can they prepare to have a voice? Chinese are on the 
table of the most powerful nation in the world. How did they get there? Why is no African represented? The five, what? Five permanent members of United Nations. There's no one representation of black. And from there, that should show you where we have no value. How do we get there? See how our leaders react. Our leaders are just like trained dogs for the masters. Trained dogs for the masters. They kill their own people, and then what do they do with the resources? They come and hide it back in the West. They die, and that wealth remain here in the wealth. Yeah, that's what happened. Tell me what African leaders invest back home. Moboto, when he dies, all the money, where is it? Think about all the top leaders who are oppressing their own people and where they are hiding their money. They are agents. If we want it, we want real change, we want value, we want people to see this dark skin is beautiful, we want to see this dark skin, this black people's lives are value, we begin with us. Here, begin with each one of you, each one of us going deep into themselves and not running away from themselves and beginning that journey to connect with who they are, having that vertical relationship with their infinite intelligence and taking that moment, then you, we invest in increasing our mental stress, in increasing our mental power so we can go out there and add value. Seriously, I've been watching this thing and I've been tired to just watch it over and over. And all I have to do now is invest in me. And if you're listening to me as a black person, what value are you adding in yourself? And for you to be seen as valuable, remember, you have to be 10 times smarter than a Chinese for you to be hired in a company. And you have to be 10 times smarter than an Indian to be hired in a company. Well, you have to be eight times smarter than an Arab to get yourself into the system. And you have to be 20 times smarter than a Jewish person or a white person to get noticed so that you get your mouth in that big steak that's being served. That is the truth. But if we go as a collective, as a collective, as a unit, because wealth comes as a collective, not as an individual. Look at how each one of us make their wealth. Where do you move to? I'm in a white neighborhood, not in a black neighborhood. Why? Why? We are afraid of each other. So you go into a black neighborhood, someone will mug and break your house. And, and then that's how we look. We don't love each other until we begin to build our neighborhood, move in those neighborhoods, and run those businesses those small shops that are run by the Chinese, those small shops that are run by the Indians in our neighborhood and whatever, here in the North America, if we can look for our entrepreneurs and invest in them, when we are paying good tax to the system, the police will see the value. First, how does it happen? When you control, when you add value, and you have the resources, and you have the money, then you will have a say in the policy. And when you have a say in the policies, then that's where you get protected. The laws will be there to protect you. But we don't have a say in the system. All we have to do is we go on the riot and we scream. That doesn't change anything. Value comes in economics. We put our stake. We've got to have a stake in it. And that way we get respected. Chinese set up shops. When have you ever seen a Chinese man begging, being dragged on the street here in the Western countries and being beaten by the police? When have you ever seen an Indian man that? When have you ever seen an Arab person that done into? When have you ever seen a Japanese being done that? But we see that with black people all the time. But have you seen that with wealthy black people? No. Yet yeah, because they have the money, they can afford the, the top lawyers. And they have friends in the marketplace that see value in them that if this black man go down, I'm going to be poor. So they all jump and protect him. So we need to think different. We are in a different era right now. It's not the ancient time where we come and say, huh, why this, why that, why is it? No, we live in a time where the human beings who, who identify themselves with their purpose, their vision, and their mission, and they're here to collaborate. But if we're going to be stuck in the olden age, and just react, nothing is going to happen. Nothing tangible is going to happen. Change begins with us, and then we spread it in our community. So that's all I can say. 
lives of the black people will matter first in us. When we see that rally, when those guns stop in those neighborhoods where we're hunting and shooting each other here in North America and all other countries and in England and also back in Africa, when we our leaders begin to see value in us, then that's when the rest of the world will see value in us.